What happens when a star wanders too close to the insatiable hunger of a supermassive black hole? We've always been told that anything that enters a black hole is lost forever. Lost forever. But is that true? It's something we thought we understood, but a recent flurry of popular science articles has run rampant around the internet, suggesting something totally counterintuitive. That the remnants of a destroyed star has been found burped back up by a black hole, months, even years, after it was first destroyed. But what's wrong with a little burp now and then? Have we discovered time-travelling stars, or just a case of galactic indigestion? I always love stories about how people work out really complicated ideas no one's ever had before, and I wanted to find out. So let's start with what we know. Black holes are astrophysical enigmas, regions of space where the gravitational pull is so intense that nothing, not even light, can escape their grasp. They form from the remnants of stars that have undergone gravitational collapse at the end of their life cycles. The core contracts and the outer layers are expelled. As the core's gravity increases, it pulls everything into a small, infinitely dense point or a singularity. But you can't ever see the singularity. If you were to look at a black hole, what you would actually be looking at would be the event horizon, an invisible boundary that anything that crosses this point is consumed by the black hole. Even if you turned around and tried to head back out at the speed of light, you'd never be able to reach the event horizon again. Captain, I cannot go any faster. These mysterious entities challenge our understanding of physics, and what exactly happens inside the event horizon is something that we don't really understand. What you can see, though, is what happens when a star strays too close to a black hole. Well before crossing the event horizon, the immense gravitational pull tears the star apart, creating an awe-inspiring spectacle. This is what physicists call a tidal disruption event, or more colloquially, when they're around friends, spaghettification. Ever heard of spaghettification? Oh yeah, I did that once. When the forces experienced on the front and the back of the star are so great and different in order of magnitude due to the gravity of the black hole that it begins to stretch and elongate the star into a long cosmic strand of hot stellar material, as the star is ripped apart in a matter of hours. This produces a powerful flash of electromagnetic radiation that propagates out into the universe. And before the keyboard warriors out there come at me for calling gravity a force rather than a bending of space-time, I hear you. Black holes are violent and messy consumers of stars, scattering almost half of a star's contents out into the universe. But some of the star's material begins to orbit around the black hole, forming a thin flat ring known as an accretion disk. That disk and how it moves around the black hole is responsible for some of the more mind-blowing images that we've seen our space telescopes produce. As these newly created accretion disks are produced by incredibly strong gravitation and often moving at high speeds, they are turbulent and unstable. As the material sloshes around, colliding with itself, it can eject matter outward into the universe, sometimes travelling incredibly fast. But how do researchers actually know any of this? These spin-launched outflows are visible because as charged particles accelerate and crash into and through the intense magnetic fields and material environment that surrounds a supermassive black hole, they emit radio waves that we can detect using radio telescopes on Earth. For decades, astronomers have studied these star-destroying events through optical telescopes, signalled in the night sky by the bright flares of light as the star was pulled apart. And then they would immediately dial in radio telescopes to the location to watch for the following radio emissions and material outflows of the accretion disk. However, sometimes, they just wouldn't see anything. We ain't found shit! And as radio telescope time is limited and expensive, and as the likelihood of these events is highest immediately after the star is consumed, when no radio events actually occurred, the telescopes were turned away to continue research on other areas of the sky. But when researchers did leave the telescopes on for longer, a strange phenomena began to emerge. Hundreds of days later, sometimes years later, after it was assumed that the turbulence in the accretion disk had stabilised and any chance of these events had faded away as the energy of the system had reduced due to friction and collisions between the particles that make up the accretion disk, suddenly the black hole would reignite as it fired stellar remains out into the night sky. It was as if the black hole had spontaneously, I think the technical term is here, burped back up a long ago consumed star. In one of the most notable early events of this type, AT 2018 HYZ, or its more internet-friendly name, Jetty McJetface, suddenly ejected stellar material about three years after the star-destroying tidal disruption event had occurred. 
And as researchers looked at the multi-wavelength data from the black hole ejection, they calculated that the material was moving at 60% of the speed of light. Approaching light speed. All of this new research has just been published on the preprint server archive, which yes, hasn't yet been peer reviewed. So I thought I would reach out directly to the researchers to help understand their findings. The reason we did this full study was there were two TDEs that turned on like over a hundred days after in the literature that uh, another group had found out of Israel. So it's like, okay, well, you find one weird thing or two, it's like, is that common or is that just a one-off, you know, something like that. And that's what motivated us, got time for dedicated observations that go to more sensitive levels. And that's when you're like, huh, okay, well, this is a very different picture than what we were anticipating. Yvette and the research team that she's part of at the Harvard and Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics watched 24 black holes involved in tidal disruption events for hundreds of days and found that in 50% of them, the black holes burped up stellar material years after the star destroying event. This behavior, it turns out, wasn't just a strange one-off, but appears to actually be semi-standard behavior of a black hole. 24, including Jetty, in this initial study, we actually detected radio emission from 17 of those, but for six of them, we actually excluded that in a very conservative sense. So for example, star formation, there were a few where they were just too faint. So we were like, we don't really know what this is. So we're just not gonna classify it. We were actually already being very strict. But in what universe would you expect coming back to the scene of a stellar crime, suddenly the explosion to start happening all over again? So what is actually happening here? You, like me, might have seen a few theories floating around the internet since publication. What if a second star was consumed by the black hole and that caused the explosive stellar projectiles and the brightening of the black hole? So we also don't think that there's a second TDE or there's material coming back or things like that. The first thing is in optical data, as I said, where you first discover these TDEs, if there was a second TDE that happens, we would have seen that in optical. We don't see another flash. We also, so like, as I said, half this material gets flung outward. We don't see this material necessarily as coming back as being enough mass. So there is theory for how much mass there might be in these outflows that could maybe be in a bound orbit over an unbound orbit, and it's just nowhere near enough. The data as it stands doesn't show any of these later star consuming events happening, or being the trigger for a later flash of radio waves. You also might jump to the conclusion of maybe gravity and time around black holes is just weird. Science is weird. And if something moves close to the speed of light, could this somehow involve relativity or time dilation? What if this was just a delay in those signals and that secondary event just reaching us? Important piece of the puzzle, and I think a lot of people ask, it has nothing to do with time delay. People always say that this is well outside the event horizon where time delay effects happen. As these events are happening locally, to each other at least, you wouldn't expect time dilation to have an effect in this way, much less on the order of years. Similarly, this likely isn't a delay in the information actually reaching us in the first place. These signals are all traveling at the speed of light and permitting that they aren't traveling differently through different gas clouds, they should reach us with a separation in time, the same as the separation in time as the events occurred near the black hole. But maybe it's just something we don't understand. Maybe it's something fundamentally different about time near a black hole. Well, maybe, but outside the event horizon, the point at which light cannot escape a black hole, the universe should appear reasonably normal other than the extreme gravitational potential of the local environment. These accretion disks are far outside the event horizon. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to see the light that they were emitting. And that leaves us honestly with not many sensible options left to pick from. Make up your mind. Stephen Hawking did introduce the concept of Hawking radiation in the 1970s as a way some particles may move away from the event horizon, but this phenomenon isn't related to what's happening here. Hawking radiation deals with pairs of particles popping into existence either side of the event horizon, with one falling into the black hole, the other making its way out into space and the universe. What this means theoretically is that black holes can evaporate over time, which is kind of interesting, but this is not the same as material coming out in an explosive way that we might imagine, particularly not with the velocity or mass required to cause the emission and cascade of these radio waves. If you take multi-frequency radio data, you can get physical parameters. We, we can apply models that other smarter people have figured out for than me 
to get things like the radius of the outflow, the energy of the outflow, its magnetic field, even the density of the material it's plowing into, uh, you can get from this multi-frequency radio information. So is something totally weird happening? Is this material suddenly and spontaneously being ejected from within the black hole out into the universe? Spit it out! This really isn't likely. Based on everything else that we have correctly predicted to happen from gravitational lensing to tidal distortion events themselves, it would take a huge amount of evidence pointing this way to convince us otherwise. Nothing in the universe should be able to escape a black hole. But something definitely counterintuitive is happening here. And this is the first time that we are seeing it and studying it across a population of these events actually happening. There was one day where within 24 hours, I found three of these that had turned on. And that was just like the crazy, it's like you already know like in the moment that you're never gonna have a day that's quite that weird, you know, for a while. Obviously we'll have to wait for confirmation by peer review of these findings, but this is just one of those sparks of curiosity, of intrigue and of discovery that tells us that there is still so much more about the universe to understand. I wanted to be an astronomer since I was 13 years old and I read a book on astronomy and I love stories and I think the story of the universe is just the best one we have. It's the most exciting, it's the most grand. Thank you to Yvette for talking to me about this subject and to her and her research team for making the universe just a bit more magical.